Um, so Jamirica, why don't you introduce yourself of who you are and how you are connected to the foster care and adoption field? Yes, I'm Jamerica Haynes-Lewis and I'm from Seattle, Washington. When I was about five years old, I went into the foster care system here in Washington state. And for the next 13 years, I would grow up essentially in our child welfare system here in the state. And after going through that experience, it just made me realize just how much we have to work together to improve the system for all. And so when I finished college, I became a motivational speaker because being in foster care left such a deep impact on my person that it wanted me to go out and share my story so that I could help other children and families who were navigating the system, as well as be able to provide some insight to the professionals who are working with these families. That was something that was very important to me to do. You say you're an advocate for children in foster care. What do you feel advocate means to you? To me, it's being able to stand up and share how something impacted you. I've had the opportunity to meet with our local legislators as well as meet other community members through different organizations, telling them what it's like to go through the system, how it can really impact your self-esteem. The fact that you're not with your family, you don't know what's going on. You may have some struggles because of the separation you have from your family. It can be really hard and so, to me, being an advocate is just speaking my truth. It's also being able to speak up for others who aren't able to speak up for themselves, as well as inspiring other people to share their stories, right? Because I'm just one person. So it's really important to me that people have an idea of what's going on so that they know how to help. But most importantly, they just know how to be there for people in their time of need. What did you feel, was there a pivotal moment that made you decide to, okay, I'm gonna share my story because it's a very difficult thing to put yes. your story out there. Was there something that just, all right, this is it, I gotta do it. Or was it like more of a slower process of? You know, I started competing in pageants in my sophomore year of college. And through the Miss America system, we were required to have a volunteer platform. And the first thing that just came to my mind, Shimon, was I have to help other foster kids because I really struggled during my time in care. And, you know, I was clothed and fed and had the opportunity to participate in activities I wouldn't have, but I also felt very lonely and felt judged at times and excluded. And so I didn't want another kid to go through that. And so that's what began my career in advocacy. What made you, was um, we going into pageants, was there a something that brought you to that? Was there using that as a platform for yourself or how did you get involved in that? Yes, well, it's funny because I was at my local community college and we had a poster board where students can find out about different scholarships and opportunities. And there was a flyer to compete in this local Miss America pageant. And I said, I wanna do that. Cause back home, there was a parade called the Daffodil Parade. And I remember we had our Daffodil Princess in court. And so they would wave from the cars and that was something that I always loved. And so I went and auditioned to be part of that program. And I've been doing pageants now for almost 12 years. The topic that you're going to speak about is called Our Girls, Our Communities, The Experience mm -hmm. of Black Girls and Adolescents in Foster Care. Why don't you give a little bit of a synopsis of what kind of things are you going to talk about during your presentation for the community? For sure. One thing that I really wanna be able to address is the unique experiences that girls of color go through care. Obviously, cultural needs, right? Knowing how to do your hair, knowing ab about your people and the culture and traditions involved in it. I just felt growing up, there were oftentimes negative portrayals of African-Americans. And I know that for a lot of youth in care, oftentimes the examples that they find in role models do come from television and other forms of media. So it was really important to me to have a workshop that addressed the needs of black girls, as well as being able to tell people how being a black child impacts their development. Unfortunately, we still live in a society that can be discriminatory. And also too, that discrimination can come across to young people and not having their needs met, which means they're more likely to face, you know, continue neglect socially, especially. And especially as young people become older, 
they need those tangible social skills in order to build relationships, go out and get jobs, have a good positive identity about themselves. And so with this workshop, it gives people insight to that phenomenon of what it means to be a black child in America and grow up to be a black adult, but also to how people can use the resources at their hands to make sure that young people feel loved and protected and are given the tangible life skills that they need. When I usually do these uh, interviews, the, the, the question I love to ask is, and it develops from asking about what kind of books you may have read over time, but then it came up to, I realized I should ask mentors because there's a lot of people that, um, one, one presenter that I interviewed said it was a track coach that got them um, to you know, advocate for foster, foster youth and teens. Was there anything uh, over your journey was there any books? Was there any mentors that you looked up to? It doesn't have, they don't have to be uh, obviously adoption or foster care related. I mean, there's advocates can, and mentors can be anywhere. Was there anything like that happen for you in your life? Yes. When I was a sophomore in high school, I read a book called Night by Eli Wetzel. And he was a teenager during World War II and him and his family were sent to a concentration camp um, because they were Jewish. And to read about his story and fight to survive, it just really resonated with me because I felt very alone. And at times I was alone while I was in foster care. I was away from former communities and family members as well as prior connections. And so reading about his story and how he's trying to make sense of such a traumatic and destructive time period, it just really inspired me to survive and stay strong. Um, growing up, I was taken to church and I found a lot of solace in faith. Um, one of my favorite stories from the Bible was about David and Goliath. And I felt like David at times where I felt like the world was like a Goliath going through foster care and the stigma behind it very, felt very much like I was dealing with this huge giant. And I always used to tell myself, David was also laughed at. He was also abandoned and ridiculed. And I said, but he prevailed in the end. And I felt that could happen happen for me too. If this seven-year-old child could prevail through his circumstances, so could I. And I feel that is something that has happened in my life. I have prevailed and I want to help others do the same. So the last question I'm going to ask is if you could tell everybody, why is it so important for them to come and see your workshop? What would you tell everyone? I would say it would be worth it because no one does it alone. And I think we have all had someone who was there in our corner helping us, accepting us, and loving us just where we were at and who were more than happy to walk alongside our journey just because. And we all need someone to bear witness to what we're going through. And really, that is how we create strong communities that thrive.